All right, guys, this is something a little bit different, and I just wanted to put it out there. This is from Jim Oaks. Jim Oaks um, basically encourages art in the Philippines. He's got several students and others working for him. And I just wanted to show as a bit of positivity that you can make business in the Philippines, and it does offer some social empowerment as well. Um, as you can see here, Jim Oaks is coming from the Middle East. Um, as he said, the dynamic 67-year-old British national has lived away from his motherland since he was a lad. Moved to the Philippines some years ago from Doha. He related, relocated after 10 years in the Middle East with 14 rescue dogs in tow and a lot of colourful dreams. Now, one of the things that he has done is he loves art for a start. And he also use, utilize it to help and empower others as well. So what you've got here, um, as you see a quote here from Jim, I've always been interested in art, but I cannot say that I can actually paint, uh, shares Oaks of his love for virtual arts, this will for a creative medium of self-expression laid the foundation of the initiative known as Doha Creative, now also called Makati Artist, which Oaks co-founded in Doha over, over 10 years ago. Oak started the group with Eugene Mariano, a Filipino national who was working in a storeroom in the Islamic Museum in Doha. A low paying job he, Mariano, took when his father died in the Philippines, leaving the family with no income. Oak narrates that he and Mariano started the group to aid overseas workers who struggle with meager incomes despite their best efforts to succeed in a land not their own. One of the things I will point out here is a lesson learned that I myself, back in the UK, I found working in maintenance where I was, I mean, I used to be on the tools, used to do carpentry, general maintenance on properties, mainly uh, around big business going back oh, in the 90s. Um, I looked after Sainsbury's, Matalan, and some other big department stores and, and basically dealt with their repairs. Normally a lot of it to do with robberies, but um, the point being is you find that the UK often limits you on your potential because a lot of the income you have gets swallowed up by day-to-day -day living. That's why I started doing locksmithing at night as well because I was out anyway because a lot of time I was doing on call so I'd be out at Birmingham at two o'clock in the morning dealing with a petrol station robbery or whatever trying to board it up organize uh, repairs for the morning taking measurements of doors all that sort of stuff so doing locksmithing at night was not really going to be put me out because I was off an hour anyway. Um, but the point being, it was a, around an extra £700 a week more um, that I made. And predominantly, a lot of it can be cash in hand as well. So from this, even when you have the ability to go and work in the Middle East, it doesn't always financially allow you independence and freedom because of costs back home family commitments, etc., etc. But it's good that uh, Jim and his friend actually recognize this, and this is obviously where the project come from. So what you've got here, um, they've said they held several exhibits in Qatar as well, began exporting abroad. The Philippines have thousands of aspiring artists, most of who live in poverty, so we encourage people to join us, only to, if only to get a regular income. Art for All, Doha Creatives that continues to thrive on Philippine soil, but its mission to benefit the lives of the artists remaining as solid as ever. All the artists are from the Philippines. Five of them are students with the University of Tarlac and five from the University of Philippines in Manila. One continues abroad, continues abroad, is working in Kuwait. Two are now full-time with me and have jobs in Manila. Uh, aside from its goal of improving lives through art, the group likewise strive to make the art accessible as possible. Thus, the artworks, which are acrylic paint on canvas, are sold at highly competitive prices. Each work of art is a vivid, vibrant, uh, both in palette, in palette and theme, with a little bit of humour injected in to reach a greater cross-section of the market. Um, I'm sure, if I remember right, they also do some work within the correctional facilities as well, which sort of empowers a lot of people with a lot of time on their hands and gives them the opportunity to work to something that can get them out of that environment. Because one of the big problems you have with correctional facilities is they often don't direct you in a way that can get you out of that loop. Because once you get caught in it, it's very difficult to move forward from there. So it's definitely something I do say you know have a look at the guys they've got their own web page 
uh, they're on Facebook. I do recommend doing a like. Um, you can go through the stuff they've been up to, where they're, where they're at, the different type of artwork. Um, but I just wanted to point out that, you know, people say you can't make a business or a success in the Philippines. The reality is there's plenty of successful expats around there and in gyms, obviously one of them. But I also like his artwork. So, yeah, you can private message for prices of anything you like as well. So I just want to point that out. Show you the uh, gyms, and they well, you can't call him an aspiring artist because he doesn't actually do art himself in the sense of painting, but he understands that there is a lot of artistic Filipinos. I see it with um, custom made bikes, I see it with the um, airbrushing and stuff. You see people with their customized motorbikes. Um, on fuel tanks, etc., in the Philippines, but obviously it's a limited market. Being able to take that out of the Philippines and make it an export is very, very good, and I think it's beneficial to everybody. But anyway, you can hit up Jim uh, at Makati Artist or Doha Creative, and I'll put the links below so you can find them yourselves. Thanks for watching.